Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Wrestling Silly, your favorite Wednesday night absolute barrel of nonsense. I am Eden, and joining me on the commentary desk, my good, good life partner. I went into that sentence with no way how to finish it. Zach, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. I was looking along, you know how it is. Yeah, I... <laughs> I, I I thought that the natural way to end my good good blank is my good good friend and, and we're only good friends to your ho to, to everyone's homophobic grandparents um, I mean we are also <laughs> friends like you are my best friend I feel I don't feel like people that are married if the person you're married to isn't your best friend like but like I feel like doing? just just calling you my just calling you my yeah, best friend it, is is like underselling it yeah, I, I would worry that there was something wrong, to be honest. I, I'd be like, shit, are we, are we about to have marriage counselling live on air? Wrestling is marriage counselling. Let's yeah. go. How does this make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, how are you? you know how are you? You, anyway. you, know what's you know what's really fun, right? Like, So, you know, for a little while there, uh, you were uh, sort of like rotating out commentators, right? Yes, and then people, and, and then I stopped asking people. Yeah, so like you you, you sort of, you announce me every week, and, and I'm going to be honest, it does give me a little bit of mischievous joy. The host. <laughs> I kind of wish I could do voices, right? Because like, I, I really like the idea that, uh, like, you know, chats, chats logging onto Twitch, they're all like, oh... Who's the commentator? Who commentator going to be this week? Oh, I hope it's someone smart and sexy and funny and qualified for the bit. And then every week it's me like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> they they like, hope it's someone oh. smart and sexy and qualified for the bit. And then every week their hopes are correct because you no. are my co-host. <laughs> everyone, everyone loves you in the chat, don't they, chat? Don't, they, don't, I, don't they I don't know why to be honest <laughs> I, I don't i don't really understand what i bring to the table but i uh i don't i don't want telling which of the two you think i am it's it's I'll, I'll, I, I i i believe it's smart and sexy because qualified for the bit might not be correct <laughs> I'm going to be honest, I, I assumed it was going to be smart and qualified for the bit. <laughs> no, you're definitely both smart and sexy. Qualified for the bit no. less so because you don't know the names of the moves and you forget what no, matches I, have I happened. Feel, I, feel, I feel like, you know, like the, the phrase smart and sexy, right? Yes. Like, to me, anyway, I don't know if this has sort of really it might just be me i i it's do do that a, it's like, a you thing um but like smart and sexy doesn't actually mean that someone is necessarily smart and or sexy right like <laughs> me saying these two words doesn't necessarily imply either of the yeah, two words okay look right shut up <laughs> it's like someone being smart and sexy is like a vibe it's like a it's it's a generic good thing you know like i don't we like, I don't a, we like a generic good thing yeah it's it's like you know someone that isn't necessarily the smartest can be smart and sexy you know like someone that's not necessarily the sexiest can be smart and sexy it like it's, it's like a vibe and it, it's a vibe i can't really explain either like it's you know sometimes that, like even if i'm not feeling particularly smart and or sexy sometimes i'm feeling smart and sexy you know what i mean i get it i get it i get it it's it's like it's like saying someone is is so rainbow rhythms it doesn't really mean anything yeah. it's just yeah, a vibe. yeah it's, it's exactly like that yeah <laughs> like you know sometimes you know sometimes you just absolutely shoving your face full of cheese and crackers and you're like god i'm feeling so smart and sexy right now <laughs> feeling so smart and sexy the oh. thing is it's one of those things i have a tendency like that like, my brain is very strange like very just Breaking very news. strange and you've just kind of <laughs> got to go with it i'm really sorry it's a vibe, yeah um, vibe, based, vibe based brain I yeah can't, I can't it really is that and and sometimes my brain will just like pick up a phrase and it will be totally devoid of all context, just assigned a new meaning. I probably heard somebody say, 
I'm feeling very smart and sexy. Your 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 and brain they... picks up a phrase and you keep saying it without context. That's called echolalia and is a symptom of both ADHD and autism. I'm sorry to diagnose you live on the stream, but oh, I mean, look, okay. <laughs> look, it's just it feels like it feels good. Like you know, so it's just sometimes I'm just not feeling beating, not being really accusations. <laughs> I'm not because I've just admitted it live on stream before you said it. Um, I didn't know. That, I I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, it is. It is a thing. Um, echo Lalia, it, it's called. It's I a... thought I was just a like one-off freak, but <laughs> nah, now I'm. You're, you're in a now whole there's gang actually, of one-off freaks. There's potentially a reason. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love when my one-off freakiness gets a name. That's why I chased an, an ADHD diagnosis for years. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Yes, that is what you know, that means for nitpicky more... reason, Valerie. We're help See, we're helping out everyone in the chat today. Everyone's the... everyone's neuro neurospicy. You know, it it's not. A great look when every time I think there's something weird that I do, <laughs> someone I, goes, see, that might be I see someone else. I see someone else talk about it, and they go, "That's a symptom of autism." Like, oh, and ADHD for both of them. I like there's so many things that people are like. This is my well. Okay, usually they like this is my experience with ADHD, but I'll see the second bit first. Yeah, for whatever reason, um, and the then it's like, oh. Yeah. Oh shit. That's me. Oh no. I I, I, I don't <laughs> I don't think I might be uh, autistic or have ADHD. He says spending hundreds of hours playing RuneScape. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. That is. <laughs> Look. The, okay. the, the the cool kids are calling it ADHD. Yeah, I, I've heard that one. They seem to be very common in tandem. I think you're we are... the hedgehog around here. Speaking of autism, here's Hannah. Um Okay. <laughs> I don't know, you, you, gonna, we talk about it I'm enough going, and it gets summoned. I'm going to I'm going to assume that she actually has autism and we're not just being like fucking no. 4chan ass. No no no, she 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 does. We're we're Excellent. not we're not being right, 4chan okay, ass. Good. We're not being 4chan ass anything. We are in fact oh, yeah. we are the wrestling in the bungalow. I don't think there could possibly be two people who are less 4chan than us. Than me and you, yeah, yeah. Um, we're, 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 well, I don't know what the opposite of, of four or chan is, so I couldn't. We're, we're against Kuhn. That's, yeah. <laughs> 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 the complete opposite of 4chan. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so look, yeah, I, I have to put it together on the fly. I'm not, I'm not smart and sexy right now, but I'm trying. Yeah. Okay, see, okay, but you feel it though, right? Like being smart and sexy <laughs> is a vibe. You... It's, I always feel it. It's, it's my permanent. Tell vibe. me, tell me, you understand that? Oh, I, right? I, like I it's... totally understand because I, Thank I, you. Okay. I have similar phrases. None that I can conjure to to memory now, but I have similar phrases that I just can't. Uh, that I just Do don't. Like, I know what... I don't use properly, but they feel like I'm using them properly. You know, it, it's funny because it's like to, I don't understand why. I, of all people, have decided that I should stream on a regular basis. I will, in my defense, say that I feel like you decided yeah, no, no. I should stream on a regular basis. You didn't decide but... to stream on a regular basis. You decided you want to spend time with me, and I decided to stream on a regular basis. Yeah, okay, right. But, like, you know, I have crippling anxiety, and I, like, say things like... I'm feeling really smart and sexy as an example of one of the things where, like, for me, that has a very specific meaning, right? Like, but it's not the it's not the direct <laughs> meaning of the sentence. You're, you're out here making you know? your own idioms. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I, like I, I do. I just enjoy that. I enjoy making my if, own. If idioms. Shakespeare can do it, I can't. You, you're on a level playing field yeah. with him. Yeah, I mean. I feel like you're mocking me. I'm not. I don't. I'm not. I think everyone's in a level playing field with Shakespeare. I think everyone should be able to just create their own idioms, create their own words. Fuck it. Yeah, you um, know, it worked for him, and there wasn't an idiom for "I'm feeling really smart and sexy right now," and I, so I made it. That's it. You're welcome. We, uh, everyone. But I, so thank you, Zach, for smart and sexy, and but, the extended like, edition smart and sexy and big brained is is for a actually, special occasion. Actually finishing a thought though, for once no. I know, incredible, right? Um I sometimes worry that I'll say something and it like means something else 
to other people. Do you know what I mean? Like, even if it's something that's, like, really normal. Because, you know, I'm, like, I'm not fucking coming on here, like, slinging hate speech or anything <laughs> like that. Um, but, like, okay, right, I've got, a f I've got a fantastic example of this, right? And I'm just going to call my mum out live on stream. Fuck yeah. So, my mum and her partner have been together for, it's got to be about 15 years. They got together. Sh they got together around the same time we did. Uh, a little bit earlier, yeah. I think, or at least they were dating. Anyway, like, like the, I, I think formally they kind of got together around the same time as us. But like, the, you know, the, the, there was kind of somewhat cracking off. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, my mum <laughs> has been has been calling him a twat faced gooner that entire time, right? And the, the, this for, was. For the... I'll, I'll repeat that again. Twat faced Guna. For those yeah, of you. right. So he calls her Bot Grot Munter and she calls him a twat faced Guna. And it's just that is what they have called each other like since the beginning of the relationship as like, you know, when they're having like a silly argument type thing and it's like they're not actually slinging insults. But do you know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah, feel yeah. like I feel like people will understand that. Yeah. But anyway. I had to have a conversation with my mum the other day <laughs> and tell her that the word Guna now had another meaning. And I had to explain to her that it might not be wise to, to, uh, to say that. your long-term boyfriend of being a Guna in public. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, especially not around younger people because if they don't know that you've been calling him that way longer than the internet has had that as a word <laughs> they don't they know he doesn't think, have a goon cave <laughs> yeah like they they might think some some things about him okay and i just I don't want anybody to be put in a situation <laughs> Where she has to explain that. And I kind of worry that I've got things like that. Not specifically with the word Guna, but do you know what you, I mean? You don't call anyone Guna. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like what what if I say something and like there's a new that like a meaning has been attached to it since I started saying it? Yeah, what, what if what if one of the nonsense words that we've said just happens to now be a slur? It's uh Yeah. It's I feel like um uh, oh, oh, Valerie! Please, please Google the word "guna" and also "goon cave" uh, and report to us back your findings. Um, Urban dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I feel like we're, uh, we were watching we were watching Astral Spiff do his do his big long every single FNAF game marathon, and he'd he'd call he'd done all of his splits, but he'd like instead of calling them just like FNAF, FNAF two, FNAF three, it was FNAF, FNOOF, FNIF, and he said like I was so scared that in writing one of these nonsense words, I'd accidentally write a slur I didn't know about. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and it's like so. So it's not just you. It's also people, successful, people, scary game player Astral Spiff. <laughs> people invent new vectors of hatred way faster than my stupid brain mm -hmm. can process the fact that. Do you know what I mean? Like they just they make that shit up, yeah. and then you're like, oh fuck, can't it's, say that anymore. <laughs> if someone could just like give me the list of slurs that every every just so I can check, I'm not accidentally saying one, thinking it's yeah. just a funny word that means I don't know, doofus. Um, I on, 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 I have on a related note because because you've thrown someone under the bus, I'm gonna throw myself under the bus. I didn't know what the word nonce meant until until like dangerously late in life. I thought it meant someone that took part in nonsense, um, like a silly person, because I mean, in this that... country it just gets, it just got sort of got flung around in the same vein as like idiot. Um, so I just thought it meant nonsense merchant um, until dangerously late in my life. I'm gonna be honest, I prefer yours. Yep. I, like, I think yours is great. Mm -hmm. I only knew that that's what it meant is because the only person I knew that used it was my dad, and my dad used it the, like, the appropriately. Way. Yeah, like so that that like I knew that that's what it meant. Like, but also I enjoy calling someone a nonsense merchant, and I can't shorten that to anything. Or, or nonsense yeah. monger, nonsense monger, nonsense merchant. They're both good. They're both good. Um, people names for people that are purveyors of malarkey and now i can't shorten yeah. that to, to, to nonce because that's a word that already means a thing <laughs> <laughs> god damn all these nonces taking my words and also committing heinous crimes i'm gonna be honest it's just it's kind of nice for once to have an insult mean something that's actually bad 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, so many insults are just like, oh, you've got learning difficulties you, or you, shit like that. You, you're overweight. You've got learning difficulties. You are yeah. a homosexual. <laughs> yeah. At least, at least, nonsense is an insult that is that means something very bad. I I even found out right. Apparently, the word bad is also. Uh, I'm sorry. It's also from fucking hate crimes and shit. Bad. Yeah, you know where it comes from. No. It comes from referring to someone as a hermaphrodite. That's. Mm, I'm gonna have to have a look yeah. at some etymology of, of, of that because that feels. It, a, it apparently comes from the word like Badel or Badil or something. I, I don't know how to pronounce it because it had all of that, you know, that um That funky oh, phonetic that? alphabet. Nonsense. Yeah, the phonetic alphabet that I've got no idea what that means. Yeah, apparently that's where it comes from. That's oh, I didn't know about that. And also well, Yeah, has... but we can't replace the word bad, can we? No. Oh, yeah, I, I, like, you I'm, know, I'm not I'm not suggesting I'm not suggesting Which we replace is... the word bad, but that's that's wild. And also it, it also I mean, has, it's fucking, isn't it? Also has weird connotations for the etymology of David Badil's surname. Um, yeah, I mean yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but that but I never wanna I never wanna uh I never wanna think about David Badil, so I've not looked that up. <laughs> <laughs> um before we continue, I want to say one more thing. Fuck David Zaslav. I'll explain more yeah. if anyone asks, but fuck David Zaslav. Um, yeah. Let's do a wrestling, shall we? It, it'll be a good wrestling with no badness and no nonsense. If you, if you Google bad etymology, origin, Old English, Badil, hermaphrodite, womanish man. That's... Though it does say perhaps from. Perhaps. Yeah, yeah, these like his, his, his etymologists and historians, they can't say for certain. Um, but they, they, I mean, they, yes, they, they can take a quick so, guess. Yeah. Sometimes they fucking make it up. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, who doesn't? We've literally just had a conversation about how we make, fucking make shit up on, on a regular basis. That's why, that's why you got to make up your own words, make up your own idioms, and then you won't accidentally, yeah. uh, you won't accidentally say slurs. Um, yeah. Wrestling. Yeah. We're going to start this week. In tag division, uh, in a real, in some real fucking good tag division, we're gonna, we're gonna bring back uh, a, a tag team that has been benched for a little while because of recovery from Love Wins, and a team that of, of an old favourite team that hasn't been, had had the ability to stretch their legs for a long time, and now I think because there's been a bit of a shakeup in the tag title division, they're seeing this as their chance to to make a push for it. Sonic Generations versus the Union. And we're talking, we're talking a classic union, not uh, not uh, new union. No Freddy Fazbear's, no Five Bears around here. We've got Karl Marx, Abe Lincoln, and two versions of Sonic the Hedgehog all stepping into the ring together. What do you think to this matchup? Who have you got your eye on for this? And what is your prediction? I feel, I feel like having your eye on him implies that you like think that they're gonna be. That's for like up and comers. And I feel like this match doesn't really have any. This up match is all legends. Right? There's no this up is, Yeah, this is fucking oops all bangers. You got those that like Siri uh, oh Lucky Charms. You know where they did the one where it was like all the marshmallows. <laughs> yeah, that's this match. This I don't know what those marshmallow only Lucky Charms were called, but you know. Whatever that was called, it, it's the that of wrestling. So. Was it was it just oops all marshmallows? Is that where that comes from? No, I don't know. Oops, oops all is is a Captain Crunch thing. I think. I think oops all it's oops all Crunch berries. Oh, shit. Um, okay, right. Okay. So well, whatever the the maybe it's. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Maybe yeah. it wasn't Lucky Chance of the Marshmallows. I think Lucky Chance has done the Oops on Marshmallows as well because it's just it's just oh no the factory fucked up let's sell it as a limited edition thing. Um, yeah. There's no there's no factory fuck ups this time. There's just four legends of wrestling silly stepping into the ring together. This is going to yeah. be an absolute fucking banger. So I think it's time that we cut the shit and go down to the ring. Your opening contest for this evening is set for a one fall with no time limit and is a tornado tag team match. Entering the ring first, from the Green Hill Zone wing in a combined weight of 32 bits of blast processing, Sonic 
and Sonic, Sonic Generations. It's nice to see him back. Sometimes, sometimes teams when they lose, sometimes teams and individuals when they lose the titles, they they sort of become a bit listless, become a bit unknown. Um, but not not Sonics. They're they're up and they're up and back in action as soon as they're fully healed, and that's good to see. It's good to see. Back in action, Looney Tunes. <laughs> Acme versus Kaiti fucking Fuck David Zaslav. Fuck you, David Zaslav. <laughs> Fuck David Zaslav, we're back. <laughs> Pat Brads, welcome to the stream. Welcome to Wrestling is Silly. You're just in time for our opening contest this evening. Sonic Generations versus The Union. Okay, is it just my connection via Discord, or are we cutting out? I think that's just Discord. Okay, that's fine. Just because you're cutting out pretty heavy. It might also be Discord's uh, noise cancellation. Cutting me out when I yell. Oh uh, yeah, that's true. You are a bit loud. I'm just I'm passionate about wrestling. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> so passionate, all of the other flats in this block need to know yes, about it. <laughs> the entire building needs to know my commentary. Yeah. If they watch the show they get to see as well. Yeah. And their opponents from the heart of the workers via Via Sinking Spring Farm, Kentucky, at a combined weight of 395 pounds, Karl Marx, Abe Lincoln, The Union. This is a real throwback of a match. This is, uh, this is, yeah, this is like year one. This is, this is first six months of wrestling a silly ass match. There is a little bit of a Lycos Gym vibe in Petter Brad's. I didn't expect someone to drop the Lycos Gym in my chat. I know I'm attracting, know. I'm attracting some some high quality wrestling fans here for the bringing up Lycos Gym. Lycos Gym are a um, couple of Manchester-based wrestlers. They used to oh, both shit. wear like lucha masks that were shaped like dogs. They were like a halfway between a lucha mask and a pup mask. Oh, cool. And then Kid Lycos won, got unmasked in a mask versus in a mask versus title match recently, so he's now unmasked. And now Kid uh, yeah. Kid Lycos 2 still has his mask. They're they're a great couple of guys. Great couple of wrestlers. Speaking of a great couple of wrestlers, here are four great wrestlers here. Gus rings the bell and movie Sonic tying it up with Abe Lincoln, Classic Sonic and Carl. The union with the almost stereo snap suplexes there out of the gate. Oh, Abe Lincoln whiffing the enziguri there. Not quite sure who he's going for, but both Carl and Classic Sonic frozen in place. Classic, somebody, somebody want to give Classic Sonic a bit of a tap? I think he might be broken. Oh, code breaker out of nowhere there by Carl Marx. Movie Sonic, a little bit taken aback, but Classic Sonic still seems to be. Uh, uh, seems, not doing so hot. You, you okay there, buddy? You, you, you good? Movie Sonic's on his own. No, nobody's there, nobody's to help him. He's he's doing he's doing a damn good job though. I like how the union are like, ah, he's not doing anything. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's oh, not troubling oh. anyone. He's not troubling anyone. Just let him be. Let him be. You know. Mark Marks was thinking about it and then was like, nah, just leave him as it is. Oh, but going for that going for that uh, tornado tornado, but not quite hitting its target. Carl and Abe rolling out to to. Uh, twin attack movie Sonic. Classic Sonic still hasn't moved. <laughs> I really feel like we might need to consider uh, medical right yeah, now. Yeah, uh, somebody, somebody get a. Yeah, he's he's not breathing. He's not he's not animated in the slightest. He's just he's perfectly still, um, and he's leaving. He's leaving both uh, the union to destroy his partner, movie Sonic, and. A big slap there from Abe Lincoln, taking it down, Movie Sonic. I'm, poor I'm, Movie Sonic. Poor Movie no. Sonic. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, I don't know if if Classic Sonic's been hit by some evil Doctor Robotnik weapon that we didn't see, or or if he's just if he's just struck by the horror of losing his title. Maybe it's a CD, Sonic CD related time incident. Um, I don't know. Someone get that man a Chaos Emerald. He needs a Chaos Emerald and a Chili Dog. He's clearly not in a good way. Oh, standing shooting star press there from Karl Marx, though. 
Maybe this is just tactics. Because these guys are two-time wrestling silly tag team champions. This has got to be yeah, some sort of weird is. tactic. Maybe it's a work. Maybe we're being worked. Maybe right we're now. being worked. Again, Gus Gus maybe Gus is Gus is keeping a bit of a, a check on him, seeing if he is alright. Oh. Yeah. But usually we'd see Gus trying to get Gus, the... is, Gus is moving, right? Yes, Gus is Gus is <laughs> seemingly his eyes flitting between the party on the inside of the ring party and the okay. outside of the ring. Okay, cool, right, fine. As long as Gus is there and present. I mean, honestly, if I was Gus in this scenario, I'd be a little freaked out as well. Yeah, I mean, I mean, one of our wrestlers just he did he did two moves and then has just completely and utterly frozen. Um, yeah. The movie Sonic, though, trying to mount an offense but cannot muster through both, both Carl and Abe. Unfortunately, can only get through one at a time. Yeah, if Gus was concerned, he would have he would have come and got a doctor. He would have like tried to try to alert one of us on the commentary table. But uh, I'm, all, I'm also, to, to, to break kayfabe, I am uh, I'm, I'm pressing all of the controls on the controller of the keyboard and I'm, I'm not controlling Classic Sonic, don't worry. That isn't what has happened. <laughs> yes, Gus is famously talented referee, don't we talk about? Never had any issues with yeah, Gus. Never had any issues with Gus, not while he was no. ref, not while he was champ, nothing. Big right hand there from Abe Lincoln. Movie Sonic, Movie Sonic, not made a push to get back in the ring. Not, uh, but but at the same time, he's not. Yeah. He's not overly good at you know pushing away both of the onslaught of both these men. I, I I'm not quite sure of Sonic Generations as tactics as a team right now. Back no. dabber from Karl Marx though. And again, there's nothing to be done by uh, the Union to end the match on the outside. This is not a false Count Anywhere match. Um, maybe it is Classic Sonic just letting letting Movie Sonic, the, the more inexperienced man, have his time to shine. But, you know, time and a place. Time and a place. Because he's got two of the most experienced tag veterans in Wrestling is Silly just bombarding him front and back. Ooh, but he's out rolling out of the way. Can this be the start of an, a mounted offense? Goes for the Lariat, but cannot take the big man down. And the Tornado Arm Breaker from Karl Marx quickly puts a stop to... Uh, quickly puts a stop to Sonic's efforts. And he's in that real, real rough armbar, but cannot tap out on the outside. Abe just manhandling or, or hedgehog handling Sonic on the outside here. But oh, he's trying his best. He's trying his best, but at this point, fighting a handicap match. Seriously, somebody go get medical to check on Classic Sonic. I think he's okay. Yeah. Shouldn't Gus be counting them out? Uh, tornado tag team match, no count outs. Oh, sorry. Yeah, of course. But at the same time... I'm just, I'm just mildly concerned by how long this has been outside the ring. That's yeah, like. this this seems to have completely broken down. I don't, I don't know if... I don't know if the union had a plan to to to, to attack them in, to attack Sonic Generations in this way, or they're just making lemonade out of a strange situation. But Abe just peppering Sonic <laughs> with a series of slaps. There, come on, come on, guys, get him back in the ring. Get him back in the ring. Oh, split leg drop avoided by Movie Sonic. If I'm Movie Sonic, I want to get in the ring ASAP. Oh, Abe Lincoln thrown back in the ring. He's collided with Classic Sonic, but still Classic Sonic not moving. <laughs> Abe now joining Classic... Oh, no, maybe the corner of the ring is cursed. Maybe that corner of the ring is cursed. Because now Abe seems to be stuck in the same... I'm so, I'm so lost. This game is slowly breaking. <laughs> I mean, at least Abe's moving. Yes. He's he's, um, he's he's bobbing and weaving. He's he's got his he's got his dukes up, as they say. He's, I, I think he's trying to hit classic Sonic, but classic just I isn't think... playing ball. Yeah, Sonic Sonic is is I think Sonic is like time displaced, or he's in a pocket universe somewhere. Um, but now on the outside, Carl and Movie Sonic are far more uh, a far more even matchup here. The two smaller men on the teams going head to head. Movie Sonic able to mount some sort of offense against Carl and going for the swinging neckbreaker. 
Move Sonic with it enough to be able to taunt his opponent. And after the prolonged onslaught that we saw, that is very bold of him. There's the tornado takedown from Karl Marx. And now, ooh, Sonic hitting the barriers. And into the ring post as well. That is gonna that is gonna really set him down for a little while. Abe's still trying to get a, any kind of response out of Classic Sonic, but Classic Sonic not not playing ball at all. And now Carl got his heelies on. <laughs> Carl's got his heelys on. He's returning back to the ring. Also trying to... Oh, he's managed to snap oh Classic God. Sonic out of his out of his stupor. And now <laughs> Abe Lincoln going for the... That tombstone grapevine. Trying to get Classic Sonic to tap. But now Movie Sonic stuck behind the commentary desk. Karl Marx not moving. This is this is an absolute train wreck of a first match, I gotta say. But it's not. It's nothing if this not entertaining. Is, this is just <laughs> absolute chaos. Because now Classic Sonic is stuck on Spanish commentary. Karl Marx with the cover. Just a two count. Classic Sonic able to kick out, but like I said, he's he's faced absolutely no offense so far. <laughs> but there's the tope over the top rope, but Karl Marx Ooh. couldn't quite catch all of it. Sonic bouncing Carl off of his spines there. Spines? Plural? Yeah, he's a hedgehog. He has spines. Oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. They, 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 are la they are going down his spine. Oh, and now both of, both of the Union, they've managed to get Movie Sonic <laughs> off of Spanish commentary. This is absolute fucking nonsense right now. But now, finally, all four men are taking part in the match. This is... This is possibly the silliest this has ever got. Yeah, this is the silliest wrestling has been. This might be it. <laughs> <laughs> but now, oh, flattened Abe Lincoln there. Karl Marx trying to return Movie Sonic to the ring to try and maybe end things, but... But now both men again teaming up on Classic Sonic. Movie Sonic, though not frozen in time, able to shotgun dropkick right on Karl Marx. Oh, Movie Sonic, they're able to punch his way out of that DDT attempt from Carl. But Carl catching the boot. Classic Sonic has his back, though. Oh, butterfly German suplex. Brutal, brutal moves. As an aside, we do have a new command exclamation mark clip. We'll take a clip of the last 60 seconds of the stream. Post them in the chat and post them in the Discord. If you, don't, if you want to make a clip but don't have time to go over to the clip page, you can do that instead. Carl returning Abe to uh, Carl's Carl sorry, uh, Abe returning Sonic to the ring. Carl facing classic Sonic, but oh, Abe hitting the uh, hitting the ring post with his face. Not not a place you want to hit the ring post with at all. Code breaker from Carl. Movie Sonic slowly rolling to the ring to ring ropes to try and help himself up. Abe though able to power free of classic Sonic. Lariat not quite hitting his target. Movie Sonic needing a bit of time to breathe. Low drop kick from Carl. Classic returns to the outside. He's not taking this match well at all. Yeah, the Union, the Union are good dudes. They want to get everyone back in the fight after milking it for five minutes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know. Scorpion death drop from Classic Sonic. Shades take of an opportunity. Take an opportunity when it's given to you. But, oh, you of know. course, yeah. Take it, but only for a little bit. Yeah. Springboard Tornado DDT there from Classic Sonic on to Karl Marx. Karl in a bit of a bad spot right now. Oh, Abe throwing Movie Sonic back into the ring. All four men once again in the fight, in the ring. But Abe Lincoln with the original choke slam. And I think he... Oh, Karl Marx gets the X Factor. But... Classic Sonic now in a on the top rope. Movie Sonic in a bad spot in that presidential grapevine, but Classic able to break it up. Fun fact: Did you know Abe, Abe Lincoln in real life is credited as inventing the choke slam? Look it up. That's pretty neat. Oh, cover out of nowhere from Movie Sonic. Just a two-count Abe breaking free in the nick of time. 
for the standing sliced bread deep cover from Movie Sonic. Carl not giving up that easy though. And now Sonic Generations have finally picked up the pace. They're finally in the match. There's the leg sweep from Movie Sonic and the Hurricane Runner from Classic. Classic with cover. Wow. I'm going to be honest, that was a bit of a win out of nowhere, wasn't it? It was indeed. Here are your winners. Sonic Generations. That was a win Absol out of absolutely nowhere. That the All it took was a well-placed Hurricane Rana. And Clearly, move. Classic Sonic was doing a bit. It was, it was yeah, all a play. It was, it was all a ploy for attention. It was, it was all it was all deep tag team lore that you would... I do, I do think I would like to just, you know, make sure that he's okay. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're gonna get we're gonna get medical attention on Classic Sonic ASAP. Yeah. We're gonna make sure he is okay. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it at all. Um, but a, a, a fantastic, a fantastic uh, comeback from the former Wrestling City Tag Champs. Uh, I didn't think they had it in them to, to win that, but they didn't even need the spin dash or their, their patented super kick. It's just a well-placed Hurricane Rana, but that is all you need to win a match these days. All you need to do is get the, <laughs> get the, uh, get the advantage for three seconds, and that's all they did. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, we, we've said that before, you know, we've, we'll say it again. It's one of those where sometimes all you need is three seconds. Mm -hmm. all, all you need to do is be the better wrestler for three seconds, and that is exactly what Classic yeah. Sonic, after uh, spending a long time getting rebooted, managed to do. Moving on, though, from our previous Wrestling is Silly Tag Champs to our current Wrestling is Silly Tag Team Champs, one half of them anyway, Majima going head-to-head -head with Spider-Man in what is promising to be one of the one of the most high-octane matches of this evening. These two men, both incredibly high-energy wrestlers. Um, Kiryu is taking a little bit of a breather to recover. He's been in, he's been in some big matches lately. Um, so I feel we, we need to give him a minute before he, before he manages to hurt himself. He's, he's carrying, some might say he's carrying the company on his back. Um, with those <laughs> with those two belts, but uh, in his yeah, Kazi in, two belts in his stead in in Kazi two belts instead, we've got Majima versus Spider Man. I know you're a little bit biased about this match, perhaps, but I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, who do you think is coming out of this with a win? I, I want to. I just want to make it very clear. There's absolutely no bias whatsoever. I've never been biased before in my life. Actually, I don't even know what, what does bias mean. Never, <laughs> never heard of it. Um, so, you know, maybe you should take that back. Okay, I take it back. There's no, there's no bias from you. But who do you think is going to yeah, win? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think Majima is going to win. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Let's let's leave it at that and go down to the go down to the ring, shall we? Your next bout is set for one fall with no time limit. Making his way to the ring first from Queens, New York, weighing in at two hundred and six pounds, Spider Man. Storm, welcome to wrestling is silly. You're just in time for our second match of the evening. Uh, wrestling City Tag Team Champion Majima versus Spider Man. It's going to be a hell of a match. I'm I'm really happy to see Spider Man. You know, still climbing, climbing the ladder, climbing is climbing a building. Some might say. Um, he's 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 really advancing in his career. That's really good to see. Yeah. Bam! 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 Bum, bum, bum. This is a real banger. I really love this song. <laughs> yeah, good. But as is as is the next one. Two fantastic entrance yeah. entrance themes. Just 
such a fucking bopper. And his opponent from Tokyo, Japan, he is one half of the Wrestling is Silly Tag Team Champions, weighing in at 230 pounds, Majima Go! Coming in in his Hanya. In, in Hanya Man mode this evening. Interesting choice. He's always loved a bit of dress up, Auntie. Yeah, to be fair, maybe so, he just fancied pissing about a bit. Yeah, I mean, I've I've seen I've seen his I've seen his collection of uh, of outfits. There's 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 all sorts. There's idol boy. There's idol girl. There's there's this. There's zombie. He just loves a bit of a dress up, does Majima. So yeah, I mean, we let him do it. Honestly, wants. fair fucking play. Like I love a bit of dress up too. Who doesn't love a bit of dress up? Yeah, my nine S is second to none. It's Except very... for what was slightly skinnier than me, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good 9S. You, you are, you are a perfect 9S. Here we go. The bell has rung. Majima getting an early advantage over Spider Man, but Spidey bouncing back as best he can, getting a Ooh. raising Majima up. But Majima slipping out the back door and hitting a picture perfect poison Rana on the web swing. The web swinger from Queens. Now these are two pretty evenly matched men, I gotta say. Oh, Spidey going up to the top rope. Very, very quick moonsault there, taking Majima by surprise. I've never seen a man take, take being taken by surprise by a moonsault before. Most people don't have the quickness to get a surprise moonsault. Yeah. Now Spidey, oh, with the low drop kick to, to Majima's bad side. That's, that's... I mean, is that bit disrespectful low, or is it opportunistic? I mean... Bit low, brother. But he's well, going for the, he went for the Hurricane Rana, but Majima turning the tides. Is it just me, or does Majima not seem like himself today? I mean, where, in, in what sense? See, I don't know. He seems a bit sluggish compared to normal. Maybe he just had a rough night. Maybe he's not... Yeah, that's. I mean, that's fair enough. We're, we're all entitled to it. Yeah. To a sluggish day. Just, just didn't get enough. Didn't get enough sleep last night. Maybe he's, maybe he's just not on, not with it. Oh, face buster on the outside from Spidey. And now Spidey with the upper hand returning Majima to the ring. Again, maybe ma we've just got some flu going around. Oof. Maybe that's what happened to Classic Sonic. Maybe, 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 maybe there's a weird Touch time flu, flu going around. No, just a touch of the flu. <laughs> that, that that the flu that makes you freeze in place. Yeah. It happens. The happens flu, to us all. The flu never made you freeze in place. <laughs> bit weird. All right, whatever. Uh, but, maybe, maybe, I'm just, maybe, maybe I'm just maybe I'm just built different, you know. Yeah. Oh, Spidey, they're mounting with a series of strikes, kicks, stomps, all over the place, and now oh. He wants Majima on his feet. He's got something planned off the springboard into a beautiful Hurricane Rana. And guess the cover. <sighs> very, very near fall there for Spidey. I thought that could have been it for Majima. But Majima I'm there. telling you, I think he's got a bit of the flu. Maybe, maybe. Half and half suplex, though. Yeah, maybe he tried on the new look to try and, you know, get it, get in... It's like, it's like, no, Majima has the flu. Hanya Man does not have the flu. <laughs> maybe that's what it is. I mean, I think maybe there's just some flu going around in the back. It would explain why Classic Sonic had his weird turn. Why we've got a slightly sluggish Majima. Nothing sluggish about that combination, Larry. It's into Except the power that. slam, though. And now he's up on the top <laughs> rope. What has Majima got in plan for Spidey? Up and shotgun drop kick taken down, taken down the web swinger. And I think he's ready to end it with the essence of choking. Oh, Spidey with a well placed elbow, though. Spidey having uh, having worked having worked against uh, the spy for a long time, he's used to getting his way out of a chokehold. That's one thing Spidey has over Majima in this match. But the beautiful knee strike there gets the cover. And no, I'm sorry. Bob Belcher coming out of nowhere to shut down Spidey. After he'd already lost. Talk Come about on, kicking a man while he's down. 
Bob Belcher, after last week's upset victory from Spider-Man, Bob Belcher clearly not happy about uh, Spidey getting any more ring time. But come on, dude. He just... He literally just lost. He just lost. <laughs> let, him, let him recover. Hit him backstage. Just... Actually, don't hit him backstage. We'd we have, we have insurance yeah, for that. No. But... <laughs> Bob Belcher clearly not done with Spidey. Majima, though, one hell of a hell of an outing there. Like I said, he was a little bit sluggish, a little bit off kilter, but he still managed to pull the victory. Still managed to pull pull the victory with that. With yeah, that well, perfect knee strike. You know, he's champion for a reason. He is. He is champ for a I'll reason. Say, you know. I mean, he bit and of the, the flu is not going to hold him back. <laughs> he he and Kiryu, they obviously they go way back, but they. They are some of the strongest contenders I think we have on the entire mm. roster. Um, I I'm real I'm real happy seeing that seeing them both on top um, or Kiryu double on doubly on top. Um, <laughs> good old Kazi two belts. Good old good old Kazi two belts. <laughs> Speaking of belts, I was, gonna, I was gonna make a joke about tops and bottoms and shit, but. I didn't get it out in time. and I was I also know. going to, but I bottled it, I'll be honest. They can't both be on yeah. top, one of them's got to be on bottom. Um, yeah. Something along those I lines. Think, maybe is, if you're both on top, maybe that's just like when you like stood next to each other and kind of rubbing. You know what I mean? What's <laughs> just, that called? Just, just that rubbing. does have a word, I can't remember it. Yeah. Um, are, are, you, are you speaking? I think of... I might be talking about frotting. Yeah, I was going to say, are you talking about frotting? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's maybe that's when like you both top him. Maybe I don't know. We'll, we'll have to talk, we'll have to, go to consult the experts. Um, yeah. <laughs> Bottoms in chat. What counts is when you both top him. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> while 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 the researchers are out doing their business, um, speaking of belts, let's talk about a belt that you're less than enthused about. Yeah. Let's talk about the flipshit division belt title. Um, Do we have to. I was having a good night. Because we are about to enter the flippy shit division. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for adding that quote. <laughs> I think I'm talking about frotting one hell of a time. Um, <laughs> this is what wrestling is silly is all about, isn't it? Uh, oh, I see, I knew this quote bot was a bad fucking idea. I knew it would come back to talking, bite me in Talk about ass. the quote bot's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's just going to be me saying stupid shit like that. And it that. adds it to and the then Discord when chat, for everyone and to then see. When, and then when chat wants to laugh at me, they'll just be like, you know, <laughs> oh, trust quote. Me. Trust me, and I'm going to say some fucking, stupid shit. It's going to be all over the quote shame me. Right, anyway, sorry, go on. <laughs> you just wanted to distract <laughs> from... Uh, you just wanted to distract from being... Talking about the flip shit division, didn't you? Um... So that frotting, though, that's, uh, that's pretty interesting. Maybe we should get back to that. <laughs> uh, enough of the flippy shit division. Let's, let's start the frotting shit division. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that did pass TOS, to be totally honest with you. Uh, but we're, we're going to the flippy shit division for one match. But it's got one of your boys. It's got it's got that boy you tagged with last week. Um, maybe the oh, only, boy Wallace. The only like guy in Wallace. the flippy shit division you might tolerate. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. I like plenty of flippy shit division people. Well, we've got we've got uh, Wallace in action this week against former flippy shit division champion Rue, and uh, I don't know if that counts as in action. To be honest, well, in action is a loaded term, but he he is in the ring with Rue. Maybe Rue is in action. I don't know. Um... Rue is not in action. <laughs> Wallace is great. But uh, before we before we go to the match, uh, Rue had a very very short snippet that he wanted to uh, that he wanted to say. Um, are you are you finished? Are you done? No. <sighs> well, don't make me listen to the champion. They he's not the champ shit. anymore. He's not the champ. Yeah, anymore. but he was there, and he's gonna talk like he is. Well, either way, and I'm gonna have to listen to it, and it's ugh. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Either way, here's what Rue had to say, and then we're just going to go straight down to the ring. Before my match tonight, I want to say something to Darth Maul. I've been watching, I've been listening, and I want to assure you I have your back. Whatever happens.
Your next match this evening is set for one ball with no time limit. Making his way to the ring first from twitch.tv slash Ruben, weighing in at just over 500 followers, your tiny teal dream boy, Rube. So, I mean, we got to talk about what, what he's just said. He said, whatever happens, he's got Darth Maul's back. And I can only read into that, that that is related to what you said last week. Is that literally all he said? I'm going to be totally honest. Yeah. The stream was so far behind uh, that I tried to refresh to bring it back and it just played me an ad. So I missed everything that was said. He said, he said he's been watching, he's been paying attention and whatever happens, he's got Darth Maul's back. And that's got to be targeted at what you said to him last week. Yeah, I mean, well, I didn't say anything to Darth Maul last week. I don't like Darth Maul. Well, you know what talk I mean. Matt. <laughs> he did talk, talk to Matt. I like Matt. Yes. Speaking of Matt, we are going to be hearing from uh, Flip Shit Division Commissioner Matt next week about the future of the division. I don't know if he's been talking to you, but he says he, he says he wants I to talk. Possibly, I couldn't possibly say anything about that matter at this time. But he said he wants to talk to the wrestling silly audience next week. And his opponent from a lovely town in northern England, weighing at 212 pounds of clay that you can't buy anymore, Wallace. What a fucking champ. We love Wallace. Wallace is great. One of the one of the heavy hitters of the Flip Shit Division. Yeah. Well, I would say one of the best strikers in the Flip Shit Division. Yeah. Um Which is pretty impressive considering he's made a plasticine. Yeah. It is it is damn impressive. Um it's gonna be interesting to see how these two styles collide. I don't think we've seen this matchup before. Um no. No, I don't think Wallace went for the belt when, uh... Aya, Kara, thank you for the 67 months of continuous Twitch sub there. That is, that is, that is a ridiculous amount of support. Thank you so much for your continued, uh, support of the nonsense that I do here. Look, no I'll just say I'll 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 be the one to say it right, but Wallace has a bit more pep in his step this week. What yeah. I've said has really resonated with him. You're a real uh, a, a, a pep analyst this week. Yeah. Oh, flying forearm there off the springboard from Wallace. Maybe you were right, and the perfect combination of the strikes and the flips that we see here from Wallace up and release suplex. Shades of the Great Goldberg with that with that suplex. Rue really taken aback by the uh, the hard hitting start of uh, Wallace's plan of action here. P yeah, are, are, are you a pep analyst? <laughs> that sounds yes. like you're an analyst of Peppa Pig. I'm not sure I like that. <laughs> and I see. I thought it sounded like pep panelist, like I'm on some kind of some kind of pep peppy, panel. peppy comedy. Show. Pe you're on pep the week <laughs> yeah <laughs> quick 30 second prediction get your predictions in now wallace with the cover oh i'm on i'm on have i got pep for you <laughs> eight out of ten peps if you will yeah <laughs> now rude not taking the not taking uh wallace's offense lying down hitting that, that flying armbar into a brutal jujikatami but can you dislocate an arm if it's just connected by plasticine i'm not sure you can rue with the cover oh quite a near fall for this early on in the match wallace having to go out and take some time to breathe headbutt did not quite meet his target but rue catches him with the irish whip Gets the sleep and the leap. Can he capitalize into the low drop kick? Turns Wallace in side out. Wallace though interrupting off the turnbuckle. The flying kick takes down Tiny Teal Dream Boy. But Rue flies in with a forearm flattening Wallace. This is a very back and forth match so far. Neither man with the upper hand, but Rue now on this shoulders. Wallace with the air raid crash. The move that put out Mackie Chase for a month gets the cover. Look, I'm not here to accuse anyone of anything, but I just feel like Gus County really slow that. 
I could have counted to three way faster than that. <laughs> I mean, you can count to three quicker, but it's a, it's a three seconds count. And I think that was yeah, a perfect time. Yeah, and I just I feel I mean, like it was count. like one and a, I think that was like one and a half seconds per second there. No, no, that that was that was that was it a perfectly like, cromulent count. What? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> that was, it was a perfectly cromulent count. I don't know what we're on about. Yeah. Now Wallace hitting uh, hitting Rue with the cutter on the outside and returning him to the ring. He's up on the turnbuckle. Big macho man elbow. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, though. As a person who has ADHD, I'm not sure I'm coming to you for accurate measurements of time. <laughs> time time so... blindness. Don't know what we're talking about. Code Teal <laughs> from Rue. <laughs> But he's not going for the cover instead, lifting up Wallace and hitting a sharp DDT. Oh, I, th I think, I think he's going for that springboard blockbuster. This could be it for Wallace. He's up. Oh, he does not. <laughs> doesn't calculate his angles properly. Completely <laughs> whiffs it. What a fucking nerd. <laughs> <laughs> the Wallace pointing and laughing as well. This does not look good. Oh, but it's a running knee to the side of the head from Wallace to Rue. Rue not looking good but he's kicking out. I mean not Rue's finest moment I gotta say but if we can refrain from pointing and laughing and calling him a nerd. <laughs> no. If, if I can't point and laugh and call him a nerd when he whiffs it like that when can I point and laugh and call him a nerd? In person. Oh, yeah alright then. I'll save them all up. Yeah, save them all up. The next M teams go, ha <laughs> nerd. Over and <laughs> yeah. over again. Wallace back up on the top rope. Another huge elbow drop. And now I think he's he's queuing up for those wrong trousers. There we go. Up and back down. Deep, deep hooks. This could this could be it for Rue. Gus Gus has got the zoomies. You see, if he hadn't fucking <laughs> run around in a goddamn circle, that'd have been a three count. He just had a bit of the zoomies. Just had a bit of the zoomies, it's fine. But, uh... Okay, the first time was a joke. <laughs> that was some bullshit. He just had the zoomies. He can't... He, he can't... He can't say he's wrong. He can't say he's bad for having the zoomies. I can't say he's bad for having the zoomies. He's a shit ref. I don't know why we still pay him. Because <laughs> nobody else wants to be ref. Oh, but Ruth throwing Wallace over over the turn, over the top rope there, and hitting a sharp DDT on the outside. Pooh, <laughs> thanks for the clip. <laughs> and now, Rue getting his mojo back. He's uh, he's he's been bust open from, from some of Wallace's offense, but he's that doesn't seem to be deterring him. In fact, it's spurring him on to go harder. <laughs> now, Rue on Rue finally with the upper hand. He's clawing at the face of Wallace, trying to smear the uh, plasticine that he calls a face. And I think he's attempting it again. No, he's changing his mind. There, there, there. Right into the waiting feet of Wallace, unfortunately. But there's the drop kick taking him down. And another one. Wallace now on the back foot. Definitely Rue having all the momentum in the world. But Rue, you could tell by the way he's running. He's, he's running on empty there. Stomping on the head of Wallace, though. But Wallace with the high boot. Gus up to a five count now. Rue blocking the chop. And flying arm breaker. Up to a six count now. Wallace refusing to get back in the ring. Rue going, fuck it, I'll get back in instead. He's not... He's, oh, Rue going to break the count. And now lefts and rights from Wallace. Big uppercut takes down Rue. But the, the elbow drop misses, though. Just as Wallace builds momentum, Rue fights back. But just, again, the other way is just as true. These are two very evenly matched fighters. But now Wallace up on the top rope. 
and goes for the elbow, but the empty pool. Oh, Rue just getting up the wrong way, but slips out of the back door for what could only have been another air raid crash. But low German Rue dumped on his head there. And I think Wallace is aiming for another big knee strike. Oh, is he? He's got oh, the wrong trousers. There we go. Deep hooks on the wrong trousers. This could be dangerous for Root. Oh. Here is your winner, Wallace. Now, was that was that count the right pace for you? That was yeah. That was an adequate count. Adequate. I'll I'll, yeah. I'll 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 make sure he knows that that count was adequate. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like a count is one of those things where the most it can be is like adequate. I don't know if you can have a good count because a good count for one person would just be a bad count for another. person. That's true. That's true. Um, so, I mean, like a, a count's got to be neutral. That was a neutral <laughs> count. That was that was a neutral and impartial count from our neutral and impartial. Yeah. Record. Yeah, he didn't fucking run around in circles first. <laughs> no zoomies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Did try and waste some fucking time before he had to start. You know, <laughs> the bare minimum for a count. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you're happy. And I'm glad uh, your boy got the win, even if yeah. everyone else's boy got the L. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, look. I like Rue as a person, but when it comes to wrestling a series, ser silly, uh, blah, 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 it's very serious, is what I was yeah. trying to say. It is very, you know? it is a very serious game. Yeah, it's a sport, and you got to take it. it yeah, it, 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 it's it's survival of the fittest in there. And, yeah, exactly. And Wallace just had the upper hand. I understand. Yeah. Shall we move on to our next match? Yeah, let's. This match, this is this is what could be described. As 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 meat madness. This we're serving you up a big plate of meat here. Sorry, Zach. This next match not vegetarian friendly. You're gonna have to avert your eyes <laughs> for this two big meaty men it's slapping right. meat. I've I've got a blindfold ready. <laughs> because we are we are pitting our two meatiest men against each other. One of these men has beef or already has attempted beef uh, with. A member of the other man's faction. I'm talking about Superman versus the unthinkable horse. Where this is meat meeting meat. It's all meat all the time. This is this is going to be big meaty men slapping meat to settle beef. Yes, big big meaty men slapping meat. Biggie somewhere has just gotten rock hard at, at the thought yeah. of this match. Anyone anyone you think is, is is going in with the upper hand, or are you just happy to see these two meaty men slap meat? I mean, a, I'm always, I'm always happy to just see some big meaty men slap it out. You know me, I see a big man, I'm like, put multiple belts on him. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> put more belts on that man. Eddie Kingston, yeah. three belts, not enough belts. Yeah, I mean, what's that about? There's belts that he doesn't <laughs> hold. What? I don't understand. Um, I mean, I feel like the horse is probably going in with an advantage, isn't he? I mean, the horse always comes in with an advantage. Yes. I mean, other than the fact that he's the unthinkable horse, which is, you know, that's that's just, that's already a... a, a, a um, an advantage. Oh, what's the word? Yeah, that's the word. I was going to say a pro, and then I was like, no, they're all pros. Can't say that. Um, I mean, this ain't amateur hour. Yeah, this ain't fucking amateur hour. What do you think this is? Wrestling is... Bad? No. <laughs> 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 Jesus! I thought I thought you were going to take a rib at the flip sheet division there, and the cards were on the table, and you just didn't deal the hand. Um, I'm going to be totally honest. I had. Do you ever have one of those moments where you just lose all function, and like the fact that I didn't start dribbling was probably a win for me. Um, I, think, I think if that is the case, we should probably get down to the ring, shall we? Yeah, no, no, but I had it back, and now you've thrown it. Now you've now you've spoken over me, and I'm like, no, it's gone again. Shit. I'm gonna Fine, go to, I'm gonna have go. to go back. Yeah. Let's get out to the ring. Before you dig yourself a bigger hole. Maybe you've got that time dilation flu that's going around. <laughs> We've all got the time dilation flu. <laughs> <laughs> 
This next match is scheduled for one fall with no time limit. Making their way to the ring first. From out of this world, weighing in at 500 pounds, the unthinkable Hooks. The horse is immune to the time dilation flu. He is immune to all human flus. Um, yeah, but what if what if it's horse compatible? <gasps> what if it's horse compatible? I I had not considered its horse compatibility. Yeah, exactly. I, so I mean, it, he is immune to time. He may though, be immune so. to time. So I feel like he's got a better chance than the rest of us. Yeah. Oh, Storm, is this your first time seeing the unthinkable horse? <gasps> You're in for no, a treat. No, that can't be <laughs> accurate. Sonic is famously a human. Didn't you? Didn't you remember that one comic strip from the nine from the 1990s Sonic the comic, Sonic the Human, <laughs> where he was turned into a real human boy with terrible hair? It's real. Look it up. Apparently, this is Storm's first time seeing the horse. I don't think wow. that. Yeah, the horse must have not been working when you were on commentary. It's one of my favorite members of the roster, the horse. And his opponent from Krypton via Metropolis, weighing at 241 pounds, Superman! Westagon, welcome to Wrestling is Silly, welcome to this utter fucking nonsense. You're just in time to see Superman and a horse from out of this world beating each other up. You, you came at the perfect time. I'm really glad he's got rid of that dire ass music. Yeah, he's, he's he's gone old school. He's 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 gotten rid of the old music. He's he's happy. He's he's full of energy again. I think he's decided what he wants. He's decided what he wants to be, and he wants yeah. to be a hero again. I'm happy for him. He was having a, he was having a real crisis of conscience for a long time. Um. And I'm, I'm real happy to see, real happy to see that he's uh, he's found himself. First time chatting, we're secretly here for a few weeks. Se secretly here? Don't worry, we, we, we appreciate lurkers around here. You caught Love Wins, hell yeah! I'm glad you caught Love Wins, I was really, I'm really proud of Love Wins. Um, Buddha, thank you for gifting that subscription to Westagon. Westagon, enjoy your emotes. And we start with, oh, a fake out forearm to the back of the head from the unthinkable horse. And Love wins may genuinely be the like I, I think that's our magnum opus. Like Love Wins was really fucking good as a show. Yeah. If you've not watched Love Wins, go back on the YouTube channel and watch Love Wins. It is, it is a real, it's a real feel good show. Um, yeah. Ooh, flying Larry out there taking down, taking down the unthinkable horse. The unthinkable horse trying to interfere with soups on the outside, but Freya, our referee, uh, getting between the two men. Not something you see often. That was pretty sick. Yeah, that was pretty sick. He's a surprisingly athletic horse. Yeah, Freya, Freya trying to keep the sanctity of uh, the sanctity of the meaty battle. No, <laughs> no, no outside nonsense. Keep it in the ring. Keep it all good. Oh, the Superman here choking out the horse, completely disregarding the sanctity of the battle. And usually, when he hits that uppercut, the, you can you see the opponent lift maybe a foot off the ground, but the horse barely moved. And speaking of barely, I, here is a barely I, hug here from Superman. I really enjoy how in, in certain lights, at certain angles, so like, you know how the horse has got unthinkable written yes. on his cheek? Just, just sometimes when the stars align, right, it looks like he's got that fan art blushy red <laughs> on his face. Looks like somebody's just called him horse. cute. <laughs> the horse is cute, what are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, but it looks like someone's called him that. True. Vertebraker like, into the slice bread. Deep cover. No no dice for the horse though. The, he's the he's the he's being the oom thinkable horse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the oom thinkable horse. And the horse, the horse, going up to the top rope. This is bad news when it, when a horse this big takes flight with a big elbow drop. Cover. 
only a nice deep cover as well. <laughs> Very good deep cover, and he placed himself yeah, between Soups and the ropes. Mm-hmm. And a suit up on the shoulders of the horse. Oh, F5 from the horse to Soups. Soups in, Soups in a dark, dark place, but he digs deep and kicks out. Oh, horse. The horse is on, the horse is on top of the world right now. I think, I think, oh, short arm in, rip cord knee strike. <laughs> There's always a little bit of time for the horse. To do a little bit of a dance. I love how fun love in here is as a as a wrestler. Yeah, yeah Soups is gonna have to really uh Yeah, Soups is Soups is having a, I still think he's having a bit of a crisis of conscience. He's, his mind isn't one hundred percent on on the match and it's showing. Or um, is it possible he's got the flu? <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's got the flu. Maybe you're right. Maybe he's got the time dilation yeah. flu that's going around. Yeah, maybe maybe just everybody's got the flu at the minute. His wrestling is fluey. Yeah. <laughs> Soups again going for the choke and see let's see if his uppercut can hit any better this time. No. He cannot get that super that super strength uppercut to get uh, to get the horse off the ground. Instead, tying his leg up in those ropes. We say ropes, they're steel cables covered in electrical tape. They are not fun to be uh, to be wrapped around. But Soup's getting into getting into getting into high gear, and finally getting warmed up, getting some proper offense in, managing to fell the tree to to break down the redwood that is the unthinkable horse, and he fires up and hit. Oh, the horse had that Superman punch scouted, and instead raking his claws down, raking his hooves down the back of Superman, and now. Soups in a bad spot. Horse, horse has been known to use these these gut wrench slams, but I don't think he's going for the gut wrench. No, instead, oh, I think he's trying for like an avalanche fall away slam, but no. Superman turns it in to an avalanche crossbody instead. Fantastic comeback there, but again blocking that Superman punch. <laughs> the horse, horse is just going to try again. Horse is just going to try again. And there he goes, he goes for the unthinkable Avalanche Gut Wrench Superplex. And gets the, gets the cover sent in the ring. Still just a two count though. And hey, this presenteeism is not a wrestling a silly thing. There is there is a thing with wrestlers. They they pretend not to be sick, they pretend not to be injured. We tell them if you're sick, if you're hurt, go home, and they don't listen. That's just a wrestling thing. Yeah. I suppose it's quite difficult when, like, part of your character can be, like, pretending to be sick. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I think the the nature of the pretending makes it, uh, makes it hard. Yeah, it makes it hard when it's real, yeah. It. yeah. And also, yeah, nobody wants to disappoint the fans. Nobody wants to put storylines in turmoil. But, hey, we tell them they don't listen. Double but but a double underhook suplex there. Superman rolling out to the outside, but the horse he's looking to he's looking to jump over that wall. I think there we go. Tope can hero. Fucking hell! I mean, when 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 a five hundred pound horse can fly over the top rope yeah. like that, I mean, we know he's we know he's literally out of this world, but that is metaphorically out of this world. I wouldn't want to be cannonballed in the face. No, by horse. I wouldn't want to be cannonballed in the face by someone half his weight. Yeah. Oh. Take almost taking shades out of Doug Ziggler's book there with that almost a zigzag. <laughs> oh, Superman has climbed over the barrier. I think he might be stuck. Excellent. This game is this game is falling apart in front of our eyes. Superman has climbed over the barrier. I don't know if he can get out. <laughs> but the horse, the horse is breaking the count. Maybe to try and help. Uh, Soups. No. Instead, just... Okay, the, the AI is completely broken. The horse doesn't know where Superman is. And I don't think Superman yeah. can get out. <laughs> am I going to have to... Am I going to have to try and... Okay, we'll see if the horse lets him get count out. Am I gonna have to? Uh, I I could try and 
I could try and yeah, control Superman to get him in. Yeah. Right. Uh, bear with me. That means I need to. That means I need to learn the controls. <laughs> I'm gonna have to play the game. Uh, controller assignment. I just want to try and get Superman in the ring. Right. No. No, I can't get him out. I can't get oh, him out. Wow. Oh wow. Okay. Oh no, he's he's properly stuck. Okay. Fine then. Maybe change to the horse and let him get count out. I'm just gonna have him walk away as, as far as possible. <laughs> yeah, um, because the horse ain't gonna the horse ain't gonna let him ring out. So Superman actively storming out. Oh, maybe he can get back in this way. Maybe he can get back in this way. No, nope. you're not controlling him anymore. Are no, you? no. God, this game like I know 2K24 comes out soon, but there's no reason to make this game break completely. Holy shit! <laughs> there we go. Wow, that was uh, upsetting. <laughs> what the hell is going on? Here is your winner, <laughs> the unthinkable horse. I was going to talk about maybe the horse is uh, setting up to, to get his name in, the, in some title pictures, but with not with victories like that. Not with victories like that at all. Um, that's definitely not the end of those two, is it? No. They're going to need something slightly more... Expl if Superman wants to go for a walk around the arena, maybe we'll give them, maybe we'll give them the ability to go for the walk yeah, around the arena. Yeah, I mean, you know, maybe Superman hurt his leg and he couldn't get back over. Maybe. His leggy. maybe so, yeah, maybe he had, like, hurt his leg and legit couldn't couldn't get over the, the, the barrier. Yeah. Um, so maybe, do you know what, medical's going to be so full. Oh, yeah, we, we're going to need had to. A, we've had a real day of it. To be you, honest. you know, you know, hard is also to find a doctor that can that can look after Kryptonians and hedgehogs and humans. Yeah, we could only get one doctor in, so he is he's going to be real fucking busy. Yeah, um, we're going to go for a quick break now. We're going to go for a quick three minute break. In the meantime, uh, in that break, do empty your bladders, refill your glasses, smoke a, a, a vape, hit your fat vape, and blow clouds over the neighbors. Um, but in the meantime, who's that Pokemon?
everybody to Wrestling Is Silly. I hope you had a very fruitful break. Storm is just discovering the adorable art that we got commissioned, that, that, that Paul, I, that I believe Paul got commissioned of the Wrestling Is Silly watch party. I'm so glad that that exists. Um, I think if that isn't posted in the Discord, uh, it, sh it should be posted in the, I think I have the image somewhere. If somebody doesn't post it by the end of the stream, I'll drop it in that Discord because it's such a lovely image. Um, you've seen the image, haven't you? Uh, yeah, I think so. The the drawing of, uh, I think it's Aikara and Paul and a couple of the others. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. seen that. The, the, I love the fact that the VRChat watch party is a thing that happens yeah. in any in any case, but the fact that there is also art of it, it's lovely. It's such a lovely, um, it's a lovely, a lovely gang of people. Um, you're all lovely people, but... The, the 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 VR chat lot you're slightly lovelier than everyone else. Mm. <laughs> um, speaking of lovely, you know what? You know what's lovely? What the wrestling is silly World Series, the WS two, yep. our our round robin tournament to decide a uh, competitor for the We Fit Trainers um, for the We Fit Trainers Women's Championship that she will consider. Uh, acceptable. We are beginning this uh, tonight's uh, event in the black block. That means uh, the two of these four women will be going head to head: Bayonetta, Princess Peach, Princess Elsa, and Lara Croft. Tonight we are going to be seeing Lara Croft versus Bayonetta, the two women that did not get their uh, get their outing at the black block debut. Princess Peach currently leading the block with three points. If you are, again, if you are new to the Wrestling City World Series, quick, quick recap. Every woman will face every other woman in their block. There are two blocks with four, minute, four women in each block. You get three points for a win, zero points for a loss, one point for a draw. There is a 15 minute time limit. If you lose via disqualification, you get a minus one point penalty. Um, and if you are accompanied at ringside by anybody else, that counts as a disqualification that is against the rules. At the end of the tournament, the two top women from each block will face each other to find a block winner. And then those two will fight each other to find a willing uh, champion of the Wrestling a Silly World Series. And that champion will go against our Women's World Champion at Birthday Bash next month in April. I think that's that's all of the rules. That's that's the yeah. that's the World Series. And that's Them's the breaks. Them's the breaks. And tonight we're seeing Lara Croft versus Bayonetta. Lara Croft, one of those like sleeper hits. Like she doesn't get yeah. an out she doesn't get an outing very often, but when she does, she hits really fucking hard. Mm -hmm. That's how she managed to qualify for the uh black block in the first place. Um Bayonetta, the current wrestling wrestling silly women smiley case holder, although the smiley case is kind of uh it has time flu and has been and uh, has been uh taken out of time for the duration of the uh, World Series. Who do you think has the upper hand in this? Obviously, Lara Croft, bit of an un bit of an underdog. Bayonetta, current smiley case holder, kind of the number one contender. She, I feel like you've just asked me a question and then answered the question. <laughs> I mean, you could say I think Lara Croft's going to win. I don't think she gets enough credit. Yeah, but you didn't ask me who I thought was going to win. You asked who I thought went was going into this with the upper hand. Yeah, who do you think is going to win? Who do I think is going to win? I think probably Bayonetta, mostly just we've seen a lot more of her, we know what she's capable of, um, previous belt holder I believe. Yep. So, I mean, th those are some strong credentials going into this. Those are don't get me wrong, I, I, don't, I don't think Lara's going to make it easy for her, but I do think ultimately she will come out on top. I think I think I think that's a, it's astute observations from you. Uh, I think I think your I think your analysis is, is 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 on the money, but I think analysis can only go so far. I think the only way to see who's going to win is to go down to the ring for the wrestling mm. silly World Series. This next bout is scheduled for one fall with a fifteen minute time limit and is a black block match for the wrestling silly World Series. On her way to the ring first from Croft Manor in Surrey, London, weighing at 134 pounds, Laura Croft. 
Again, not a woman that gets a lot of show at Wrestling is Silly, but she's a traveler. She's an explorer. She's very hard she's to pin down for a, a schedule. Lot. She is she's very busy. busy a lot. But she's oh, she's always real excited to be here. She's uh, she brings she brings a a fire that you can only find inside of ancient ruins. And her opponent from the city of Deja Vu, weighing at 253 pounds, she is the wrestling is silly women's smiley case holder, Bayonetta. Crowd going wild for Bayonetta in the chat and in the stands. She's coming to the coming to the ring with that smiley case because although it is out of play for the duration of the tournament, she is its rightful holder and she will show that off whenever she can. Two women squaring up Bayonetta a lot more uh, fast and loose with the match. Lara Croft on high alert. Oh, Bayonetta shoving away Lara and going for the Casadora into the arm wrench there. You see 15 minutes on the clock in the top corner. Oh, big, big right hand into a beautiful Hurricane Rana there. Oh, and Bayonetta unfortunately showboating a little bit too hard. This is a very big clash of styles. Bayonetta is a lot of frills, a lot of style, whereas Lara's fighting style can be described as all business, no nonsense. It's going to be interesting to see which of these two comes out on top. But Bayonetta currently tying Lara in a knot there, wrenching the legs, wrenching the face. Not quite going full Romero special, but close enough. And just stomping on at the face of Lara Croft with those... Boots that apparently have guns in them. She told me they had guns in them before she went out today. And she thought I would like to know that she is wearing shoes with guns in. And that I wasn't going to stop her. She does like her guns. She does she like does her, like like her guns. guns. Beautiful, beautiful uh, over the top rope. Topic on hero there from Bayonetta. But she didn't think I was going to, you know, have any uh, objections to her wearing guns. I mean, <laughs> you know, look. Throughout her many adventures, she's come up against all sorts of weird and wonderful beasties. That so, is true. So, you know, maybe she's just worried that she'll find more dinosaurs or thralls. I mean, both the of these North women Gods. are used to fighting dinosaurs. Um, yeah, I know. But, but Lara didn't bring guns, I don't think, unless there's one hidden somewhere. See, so she's wearing a gun holster, but it's empty. Oh, Hurricane Rana into the cover. Only oh, a one count. We were talking about Lara. Wait, who are we talking about that brought guns? Bayonetta and her gun shoes. Oh, I see. Sorry, do you know, sorry, I totally misheard that. I thought you said that Lara brought the guns. Did Lara Croft's shoes she also have brought... guns in them? I didn't know about that. I mean, they might do. She got really techy in Underworld. Maybe, maybe they've both got gun shoes. Maybe this is an even fight. Maybe I should just start talking about gun shoes. Clearly, it's confusing you. Look, okay. That's not very oh. difficult. I've got Lara some weird time Croft. dilations going on. <laughs> Crucifix power bomb from Lara Croft there. And she's waking up Bayonetta for something. It, what is she what is she leveling up for? Big super kick from Lara, but she falls the wrong way. And she falls the wrong way and sadly doesn't get the cover just in time. This could be too late. Yeah, it was indeed. Is Barney, did Barney officially get fired? One of the Barneys got fired. The other Barney, the other Barney is still in Wrestling is Silly, but the, the, all of the big monsters are kind of, they're lurking in the shadows at the minute. Um, ooh, ooh, big spinning heel kick there. Shades of Malachi Black with that spinning heel kick. And now Lara Croft d doing doing something to Bayonetta there. I'm sure, I'm sure you find uh, nasty details about- Nasty headbutts there. Nasty series of headbutts. Lara on top right now. Yeah, Barney didn't get fired. Pepsi Man got fired. Pepsi Man's out of here. But uh, Barney, along with like Winnie the Pooh and 
uh, Garfield. They're all sort of doing their own thing at the minute. But then Lara Croft up on her feet. Double uh, double sledge there from Lara Croft. Bayonetta struggling to get up into top gear. But maybe with that armor, she can claw back some momentum. She's got... Oh, she's going for the... A double, a double fisherman shoulder breaker. Oh, yeah. We can't make top and bottom jokes all the time, especially not with the way wrestling works. Oh, but speaking of top and bottom jokes, butterfly suplex, tiger driver. I think she calls that the full climax, does Bayonetta? But Lara Croft grabbing the rope. You must, you must be disappointed to see. I know you're always disappointed to see a rope break. Yeah, well, you know, I just feel like our wrestlers should know better. But you know, as an experienced woman, she should be able to, to move a wrestler yeah. around, but... Oh, beautiful cyclone kick. It's one of those things where I, I'm both, like, you know... Bayonetta should know better, but I'm glad that Lara took advantage yeah. of the opportunity to rope break available yeah. to her. But a uh, Lara Croft flying over the top rope there, but not not quite able to capitalize. Bayonetta taking advantage of the situation, and a little bit stop start in those runs. Maybe she's injured a leg at some point. But Bayonetta still managing to to be in control, to be full of momentum. And now Lara being gracefully placed on that barricade, and oh. The side of her face meeting the bad side of Bayonetta's knee. Referee up on a six count, I believe, at the minute. Big delayed suplex there. We're down, down past the five minute mark. Nine and a half minutes left in the match. Eight count as Bayonetta slides back into the ring. Yeah, Lara could have fallen in a very bad direction there. Collided with the the apron, the uh, the ring steps. It could have been very, very bad for Lara. But fortunately, she did fall in the best possible way. Bayonetta now leaping off the top rope. Big elbow drop. Lara Croft having to, having to play uh, defense here. Can't defend from a backbreaker like that, though. And now wrenching, really wrenching at that arm. And now, oh, guillotine choke into a, oh, not quite sure what that's called, sort of uh, guillotine chokes, guillotine <laughs> choke slam, I don't know, brutal, whatever it was. Now she's waiting for Lara to get back up to her feet, Bayonetta maybe looking at ending this. Double underhook, getting those double underhooks, going full climax with a tiger driver. Gets the cover. Textbook from our smiley case holder. Yep. Here's your winner taking three points in the World Series Black Block. Bayonetta. Doing a little dance. Really, generally getting down tonight. I appreciate it. She's, I'm she's... glad. Uh, I'm glad I wasn't anyone thinking that. <laughs> And now, what a what a great way to open the second half of Wrestling is Silly. Bayonetta taking three points there on the black block, putting her in line with uh, in line with Princess Peach in the uh, in the leading position here on the black block. We will be returning to the Wrestling is Silly World Series for the gold block soon. So that is not all of your Wrestling is Silly World Series action for this evening. It will be back shortly, but in the intervening time, let's go back to the men's tag division. Some more tornado tag action for you. The snack pack in a rare configuration of Luigi and Waluigi in tag action against Vicious and Delicious, who are mounting one hell of an offense up the tag title card. How do you feel about these two teams? I mean, they're the people's champions, aren't they? I feel like both of both these teams of are the people's champs. Yeah, right. So, like, either way, it's going to be a good time. Very true. Same. I mean, everyone loves everyone loves Mackie Chase. Everyone loves Luigi. Waluigi and Big Mac are also going to be there. Um, 
I this is this is this is gonna be a fun match, whatever happens. Um yeah. who would you prefer to come out on top? Um I'm always a bit partial to Luigi and Waluigi, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, I d and and with what Vicious and Delicious did to your boys, I'm not surprised that you did yeah, well, that way. Yeah, well, you know, we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> well, uh, then, then let's not talk anymore. Then let's just go down to the ring and see how this all unfolds. Your next match for this evening is set for one fall with no time limit. Making their way to the ring first. From the Mushroom Kingdom, Waluigi and Luigi, the Snack Pack. Or 2 EG as they used to be called before the Snack Pack was formed. I've not asked them if they're still 2 uh, EG or if they are uh, exclusively the Snack Pack now. I think they might be the Snack Pack for, you know, because they're all about... A unity. I don't think subgroups mm. would go down well in the snack pack. But no, uh, the, these two um, had what could be considered the match of the year from last year when they fought Jason Voorhees and Mr. M. Um, mm. You find that highlighted here on the Twitch channel if you missed that one. That was a hell of a banger last year. I could have sworn that was longer ago, to be honest. Wrestling Silly's only been going for like 18 months. Has it? Um, oh, no. No, no. It's, it's coming up two years. Because uh, the two-year anniversary is next month. Oh, damn. And their opponents from the largest McDonald's in Madison, Wisconsin... Weighing in at 185 pounds and 313 pounds of FDA certified prime beef. The Big Mac and Mackie Chase. Vicious and delicious. Bit of a mouthful that. In more ways than one, this team. Again, I, I say this every time. Some people will, will tune into the show and go, Hey, why'd you make Mayor McCheese so sexy? Uh, and to them I call, and to them I say, cowards. Hmm. Um, if you don't appreciate Sexy Man McCheese, you don't appreciate wrestling as silly. Look at him. FDA prime beef. <laughs> but now, Big Mac being peppered with blows from Luigi as Mac and Cheese Man uh, able, is able to fell the tree that is Waluigi, but just the once... Momentum shifting almost immediately between the two the two brawls breaking out. Is A1 meat the, the A1 the is A1 meat? is is steak sauce. Um No, I, there's like a there's like a meat grade in. Yeah, oh yeah, A1 A1 is is I think the top the top meat grade, which is one. why which is why yeah. it's a name of steak sauce. But yes, it is it is like the top the top uh, meat rating, I believe. I'm not great at rating meat. Um, no, and you're even neither. worse. I know, I know Wagyu is good, but I know, I know the Big Mac isn't a Wagyu beef. Okay, but is Wagyu good there, or is it just like, I don't know, people are like, oh, um, eat all raw meat? No, no, Wagyu beef is like, um, like the, I, I believe the Japanese government has to declare your farm wagyu like like they have to they have oh, to I see. Okay. yeah it, it's like a protected status kind of thing wagyu and kobe ah, are the two okay. fancy beefs in japan right okay oh air raid neck breaker from waluigi again Mackie chase has a bad relationship with the air raid crash i don't know if waluigi was uh doing that on purpose or that just happens to be his thing but a big elbow drop there center of the ring Mackie chase gets covered I like rating meat when it's like, when it's like meat, like uh, big meaty men, but not when it's yeah, not when I'm it's meat. Yeah, I'm good at doing that. I'm and when it's and that. when it's big meaty men, they all get an A star. Nobody yeah. fails at being a big meaty man. Yeah. Oh, Luigi's managed to get a get a break away from the Big Mac and breaking up the pin that the, the Mac the opportunistic pin from Mac Chase. Now Luigi taking. The taking the leg, Fisherman Buster, 
Dropping Mackie Jakes right on his cheesy little head. <laughs> now Big Mac joining the joining the three other men. And the hockey fight breaks out between the Big Mac and Luigi. Oh. Why is it called a hockey fight? Because that's how people fight in hockey games. Is it? Yep. According I to don't television. Know about hockey, so. Oh, the two men in purple colliding with the shoulder tackles that didn't go anywhere until Luigi came in to distract the Big Mac. You know, hockey is the only sport with a fight counter. Um, nice. You're allowed to fight, but only for like 20 seconds at a time, I believe. I mean, honestly, fair enough. Sometimes you just need a little fight as a treat. While Luigi, though, has had the flavor packets put on him. <gasps> oh, and that was the closest of two and a half counts. Luigi coming in at the very last second with a moonsault that the, so the standing shooting star press from Mackie Chase might have put out. While Luigi, he's slowly coming back to his senses. Gotta, gotta say, Luigi was there in the absolute nickest of times. While Luigi sits out the senton and a second time, using his back to impact the Big Mac. Big, big drop kick there. Huge leap with that drop kick into a snapmare and the front, uh, so not quite, uh, sorry, sitting front face lock. Didn't know, didn't know uh, Waluigi was such a technical wrestler, but here we are. But Waluigi, oh! Moved just far enough away to uh, to allow Mackie Chase to whiff that flying Hurricane Runner attempt and land right on his coccyx. But Waluigi gets smashed burgered by the Big Mac. Luigi's just in time to break it up, though. And hitting that first press, just ground and pound. Turning that Big Mac back into the ground beef. And Luigi with the ring awareness to roll out of the way, expertly break roll out of the way of that uh, attack attempt from Mackie Chase. So Waluigi definitely the one with the most ring rust out of these uh, out of these four men. Casadora into the bulldog there from Banky Chase. A oh, rugby has a fight radius. Wow, that's exciting. Uh, you ran into the you ran in from too far away to get into that fight. Wow. What a what a what a time. And now Luigi getting smash burgered by the Big Mac. I really Deep enjoy cover. that it's called the Sin Bin. Oh. And the Smash Burger takes out Luigi. Well, Luigi couldn't quite get there in time. Sin Bin is a fantastic name. Here is your winner. Vicious and delicious. Yeah, I thought the Sin Bin was like a joke name that they called it in schools. Is it an actual thing in rugby? Like in hockey, it's the penalty box, which is far less fun than the, the sin bin. The sin bin's great. No sin bin in that match, though. Just pure, pure mm. action from Vicious and Delicious. I mean, too, the, the, too EG, the snack pack. They had the upper hand in the opening moments. Vicious and Delicious really, really pulling it back. They are, mm -hmm. they are really, really going hard, going ham, going beef. Um, like... They're, they're in their A game right now. They're in the element right now. And I'm really excited yeah. to see where they go next, what they do next with both both the Big Mac in singles action and uh, and Vicious and Delicious as a team. They could both, like, if they wanted to. Kazi two belts could be Kazi no belts if they, if they handle this well. No. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Kazi all belts. <laughs> Kazi all belts. But the, yeah. Big Mac is, the Big Mac is a big man and you say give the big man all the belts. Yeah, but Kiryu's a big man too. So. Kiryu, Kiryu is a, Kiryu's not a small man. Kiryu is a, is a fridge freezer with a face. Um, exactly. But uh, like we said, Kiryu, Kiryu off recovering this week. We we'll back. We we'll back in a couple weeks' time. Um, let's return. Let's let's go away from big meaty men. Let's return to the women's division for the Wrestling City World Series Gold Block. We are seeing two B and Daisy go head to head this week. Daisy uh, in front of 2B with three points. 2B currently sat, unfortunately, on zero points. So this could be a chance for 2B to equalize or a chance for 2B to run away with the lead in the block. Who do you think has the, uh, who do you think is gonna run away with these three points? Okay, I'm gonna kind of tangent a little bit, right? Tangent away. Yeah, I will. Um, so, 
You are cutting out so bad, I hear basically half of what you're saying, and I have to intuit what you say. <laughs> this normally happens by... The, I don't know what it is. It's like, some for some reason, in the second half of the show, the, the internet gets worse for some reason. It happens basically every week, so... I just kind of learn how to intuit what you've said. Um, sometimes that's really hard, and sometimes I just get, like, my own show. So, like, last show, there were some highlights, like, I didn't know Waluigi could... But ooh, I don't know what you said in the it 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 was just it was like I didn't know Waluigi, but ooh, and it was like that sounded like you like you suddenly realised he was attractive or something. Um, another favourite was uh, Maggie Chase got dropped on his cock, um, which I'm pretty sure was at the whole sentence no. because he was still talking. His, his cock um, yeah, um, I I intuited that because he was dropped on his ass. He was. Um, but yeah, so like sometimes it's just like, if I go quiet, it's because I haven't heard most of what you've said. That makes I'm a lot of like, sense. I don't even know how to pretend to fill in those gaps. And <laughs> I do talk a lot of shit. That I, that is a really hard well, job no, for you. It's it's literally not even that. It's like it's something to do with when the stream is actually playing. It's worse in matches when it's actually trying to show me something because the because it's not actually showing me anything right now like there's nothing moving i'm hearing you okay but the minute that the match actually starts it's really bad it all just goes to shit yeah and i get about four pixels so not only do i have to try and intuit what you're saying i have to intuit what's going on in the match as well um but anyway going going back i just wanted to have a laugh with everyone that Mackie Tr Chase got dropped on his cock. He did. He um, did get dropped on his cock. Six. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be honest, it could go to either of them, couldn't it? I mean, again... <laughs> All that long tangent for just, eh, go either way. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, this is kind of the same as the Lara Croft match, isn't it? Because it's like, you know, one of them is a previous title holder. Don't think Daisy actually got that title when she no. had Smiley Case, did she? No. No, so, like, it's... Oh, it's the title hold, ex title holder versus the person who's never had a championship belt. So, like, I mean, it could go either way. You lean towards good, 2B. That's, though. A, that's a good thing for Daisy, but yeah, I am leaning towards 2B. That's... I mean, she's kind of put her money where her mouth is, hasn't she? She has so. indeed. And uh, she's currently, I mean, I mean, look, look, look at the table. She's got stiff competition, but she's currently tied first in the block with the former champ, so. It's all, it's, it's, it's Daisy's game to lose. Let's see if she can uh, hold on to victory as we go down to the ring. This next match is set for a 1-4 with a 15 minute time limit and is a gold block match in the Wrestling is Silly World Series. Uh, on the way to the ring first from the moon, weighing in at 328 pounds to B. Out of that whole intro, I got the moon and 2B. Well, you got the important bits. You got the important bits. Yeah. I think 2B, one of my favorite women in the division. I'm not at all biased. But uh, I really enjoy her fighting style, her, her, just her vibe. I like what she's doing. <laughs> I think I think if plays if she plays a card right, tournament could be us. And her opponent from Sarasaland, weighing in at 140 pounds, Princess Daisy. But Daisy, as we've said before, she likes to just kick her opponent's fucking heads off. And everyone is susceptible to having their heads kicked off, even robots from the moon. Yeah. So I think, as much as I, as much as I just said it could be two Bs to win, like Daisy has as good a chance as any has taken the whole tournament. She's actually got a better chance than two B right now because she's joint first in a block. And the, the bell has rung. Ooh, big back elbow from 2B taking out Daisy. Daisy, though, getting the boots up, pushing 2B away. 
but to be refusing to refusing to lock up on Daisy's uh, on Daisy's uh, terms, and going for the ducking under into the German, German suplex with a high bridge, maybe looking at maybe looking at shutting the game down early. And now the entire stream got the time dilation flu for a moment there. <laughs> but to be coming out on top, dropping down to the outside just in time for Daisy to roll out. She she. Uh, Really expertly read her opponent there and dropping her snake eyes on the apron, the hardest part of the ring. And now the sit out neck breaker, brutal, because that only that only not impacts your neck, but your whole spine just just chunks out in a really awkward angle. And she goes for it again, but Daisy reversing it into a neck break of her own that time. And now Daisy again with the educated feet, the knee to the gut, the thrust kick. And now, oh, Tubi's head colliding with again the bar of that apron, of the apron, the hottest part of the goddamn ring. Leg sweep from Daisy. Daisy in control about now. And now Daisy throws Tubi into that Spanish commentary table, colliding with Tubi. Referee up to a seven count right now to be returned to the ring by Daisy. Daisy taking the scenic route back in, getting a getting an opportunity to catch a breath back. Oh, and the elbow collides with the side of Tubi's head. Tubi in center of the ring, deep cover. Just a two count. Daisy able to break free. Just just about though. Now Daisy still in control, able to flatten, flatten to be face first, going for another cover. A one count that time to be, to be uh, uh, going into some attack protocols. It's the ropes, big spinning heel kick, taking down Daisy. Do not, though, do not get too cocky to be and do not get into a striking match, especially not a foot-based striking match with someone like Daisy, because she will kick your fucking head off. Got to be intelligent about this. To be able to throw Daisy over the top rope and ugh, another sit-out neckbreaker. German suplex expertly done, Daisy. Uh, Daisy with the uh, strategic exit, maybe trying to coax Tubi out, but does not. It doesn't work out as she planned. Instead, she ends up on Tubi's shoulder and hits another snake eyes. That's, the, that's what we call a receipt in the business. Making good on the snake eyes that Tubi was subjected to earlier in the match. And once again, the fight spills to the outside, but Tubi returning Daisy back into the ring. To be up on top. Daisy slowly getting to her feet and the diving cross body from 2B gets the cover. Still not enough to keep Daisy down though. Daisy's a fighter. Daisy's tenacious. Joining Wrestling is Silly has really let Daisy show the world just how tenacious, how aggressive she can be. A lot of people say she's forgettable in the, in the sports, in the carts, but... Here in the ring, you cannot forget about Princess Daisy. And now she gets the elbow up. Doesn't doesn't care what 2B is deciding to do. She gets that elbow up, but right into the snapmare. And the cyclone kick from 2B. I like Daisy. Daisy's great. Daisy's a really Whenever, good competitor. I mean, to be honest, I will, I will admit... You know, I'm only human. If Rosalina's there, I will pick Rosalina. But Daisy's my second choice. <laughs> <laughs> Jumping heel kick into the hip attack from 2B. And now... Oh. Oh, the... 2B executing those late game spoilers. The hammerlock chokehold. This could be real bad for Daisy. She's trying her best to sort of writhe out of this hole but she's only got one arm operating but she's able to wrench her way out of the, of the hold and now oh, beautiful little back roll ankle pick single leg takedown from Daisy oh Daisy's real real good real talented 
Yeah. Oh, two be kicking out at one though. The 2B slowly making a slow roll to the outside, but Daisy Tope can't hero over that top rope. And a Daisy getting the ripcord into the Lariat, turning 2B inside out. This fight has spent a lot of, lot of its time on the outside, and Daisy getting a rear naked choke, but on the outside, 2B cannot tap out right now. This is just wearing 2B down. And 2B, though, hitting the jawbreaker to get free. A 2B attempting to return Daisy to the ring. Daisy not having any of it. Instead, oh, Daisy getting turned inside out by 2B. And now, oh, narrowly avoiding those steel ring steps. Daisy flies back into the ring. In, the elbow drop right on the right on the butt. Right on the butt. <laughs> and now Daisy goes up into the tornado. DDT gets the cover. Not enough. Not enough to keep 2B down. Daisy's gonna have to dig deep. It might take it might take a Sarasa slam or two to keep 2B down at this point. And speaking of, there's the throat chop and there's the Sarasa slam. 2B landing a little bit awkwardly on her hip there. But Daisy gets the cover. No! 2B still able, even after that awkward landing right on her hip, she's able to break free. And not only that, reverse momentum with that arm wrench. There's the flying, there's the spinning flying kick into the hip attack. Maybe proving that no, she didn't injure her hip. It's still an offensive weapon. But 2B, I think she's about ready to unsheath. No, she's not unsheathing the katana. Instead, going back to the late game spoilers, that hammerlock chokehold. The grapevines are in and Daisy is tacked. Well, damn. Well, damn indeed. Here is your winner taking three points. Two. B. That puts 2B in joint first place in the gold block. This gold block has just gotten far more interesting. Daisy failing mm -hmm. to capture that second win. What a match that was. What an incredible match that was. That was that was good. That's a real absolute banger. But we have time for just one more absolute banger this evening. And that is a surprise triple threat hardcore title match. Because Wonder Woman uh she has said she's got uh she's got a after after finding uh victory in the mixed tag um in the mixed tag atmospheres with uh, Superman in the team Super Wonder. Wonder Woman's got a new lease on the hardcore title. She said she wants to be defending it a whole lot more. And she also sensed a burgeoning dispute, she called it. A burgeoning dispute between two women that she wanted to see in the ring. That is Ursula and Marnie. Thank you for the hydrate. Zach, I hope you have a drink. I've literally just had a little drink, so... Good. So Ursula and Marnie both caught very much in the middle of this of this misty thing that Ursula has going on. Marnie trying to make a trying to make a thing with 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 Misty in the in tag action. Ursula swooping in and steal in Marnie's perspective stealing her away. Um, Wonder Woman deciding that not only should the I think Wonder Woman decided that these two need to fight it out to decide something, and she thought what better way to get them to fight it out. Than to put a title on the line and bait them in. Um, this is an interesting move from Wonder Woman, but I'm very excited to see this. This is going to be a brutal main event. The women's division always is, yeah. and especially when the title's on the line. So, any any picks, any predictions, any insight on this match? I think Wonder Woman's probably going to keep it. I mean, we've we've seen more from Ursula in the past, and this isn't to sort of discount what we've seen from her or you know anything like that um but when when we've had wonder woman come out she has summarily dominated uh 
every match she's been in, basically. Um, that is true. You know, she's she's a very strong, very domineering competitor. Yeah, um, and to be totally honest, I just maybe it's just because we haven't seen much from Marnie, but I just can't imagine. I just can't imagine when she's getting into the ring with Wonder Woman and Ursula, we're going to see much. That's true. But again, anything can happen, especially in the hardcore division. Um, yeah, the... yeah, it can. And I mean, triple threats are always a weird one. The, there's, the, the dynamics are all different and you never quite know what you're going to get. In, indeed, indeed. I think it's time that we know what we're going to get by going down to the ring for the last time this evening for our main event. Wrestling is silly. Your main event tonight is a triple threat falls count anywhere match for the Hardcore Championship. Making her way to the ring first, the challenger from deep below the sea, weighing at 351 pounds, representing the evil old ladies, Ursula. Now we're talking indeed, random citizen. Ursula, not used to coming out without her partner, without uh, Corella Deville, but uh, she's more than she's shown she's more than capable of holding her own. You know. Yeah. Next, the reigning and defending hardcore champion from Amazonia, weighing in at 143 pounds, Wonder Woman. Very unorthodox for the champ to not come out last, but Wonder Woman is nothing but unorthodox, and the hardcore division is nothing but unorthodox, so... Mm -hmm. I like what she's doing. I like a new look. A very retro. Very, I, I dig it. Yeah, I, I, I'm a little bit partial to a to a retro Wonder Woman look. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's the best one. <laughs> <laughs> she's dug back into a closet, found something that pops a little bit more. And to be honest, it matches Superman's yeah. outfit more. Yeah. Um, and they are the mixed tag. Uh, the mixed tag champs. They should match. Champions, I, I, so, I get it. Yeah. And from Spikemouth in Galler, weighing in at 133 pounds, Marnie. The minus out here vibing. Yeah. Definitely, the, I would say the wild card of this match, the, the one that people know the least about going in. I, I mean, she's been here at least, hasn't she? Mm -hmm. um, in terms of how many fights she's been yeah. in and things like that. Wonder Woman and Ursula were both day one women's division. Marnie came in a little bit later. She was a late acquisition. But this promises to be a, uh, a hard hitting match. It doesn't matter how long you've been in. You just gotta... This is, this is Marnie's first title opportunity here at Wrestling is Silly. And I'm hoping it's gonna be a good one. Part of me wants Marnie to take it. Just for just for chaos, you know. Just for the shits and gigs. Yeah. There Gus rings the bell on our main event. Wonder Woman making a beeline over for Ursula. Ursula catching the boot, spinning Wonder Woman around, but Marnie coming in to break up the action. Big, strong wa waist lock takedown before turning her attention over to Ursula, hitting Ursula with the DDT. Trying to get an early cover in, but Wonder Woman not having any of that. Wonder Woman back in control, but the diet, the crossbody from Ursula, it's like getting hit by a train. 
A crossbody from Ursula. And the leg lariat taking down the champ. Ursula looking dominant right about now, but Wonder Woman just one lariat away from turning the tide. I think the I, I I don't want I don't want to write Marnie out too early, but I think the real match here is Wonder Woman versus Ursula. Wonder Woman strong words for Ursula back in the ring, not opting not to go for for any plunder underneath the ring, but Ursula not as sportswoman like she goes for the kendo stick, and oh before she gets a chance to use it, Wonder Woman a big gut kick. Northern Light suplex from from Ursula onto Wonder Woman and another cross body onto Marnie. But Marnie though. Oh. Ursula sends Marnie down to Atlantis. But only a one count from Marnie. Marnie's feet, of course, resting on that top on that bottom rope. Wonder Woman turning her attention to that kendo stick and just cracking it over the head of Ursula. But Ursula managing to deflect that second kick. And now a second kendo stick is in play from Marnie. Oh, but Ursula managing to expertly disarm the, uh, the Galarian champion prospect. Wonder Woman. Oh, follow-up slam attempt by Wonder Woman, but Marnie slipping out the back door. Oh, shotgun dropkick interrupting Ursula's flow. Wonder Woman able to get back up to her feet. Ursula, oh, rising knee from Marnie onto Ursula. And her Irish whip sending, sending, uh, oh, beautiful, beautiful, uh, reversal of that crucifix powerbomb from Wonder Woman. And jumping, jumping over the top rope to avoid the fallout from whatever Marnie and Ursula had in play. Look at that show of strength with the electric chair face buster there from Wonder Woman. And hitting the drop, drop kick just in time to avoid that kendo stick. Wonder Woman. She's ended up as the hardcore champion. Barely ever swung a weapon once. It's a very, very unique way to be hardcore champ. She doesn't her end... Her fists are her weapons. True. She doesn't end every match covered in blood. She's no John Moxley. But look, you she can't deny it. that strength. The GTH taking out Wonder taking out Ursula. Honestly, picking up anyone that doesn't want to be lifted is impressive enough. That's true. But Marnie coming in trying to steal the pin. Was that a pin or were you just laying your hands on the champion's breasts there? Marnie? I don't know. Yeah, to be honest, that that didn't feel right. We might need to talk to Marnie about that. <laughs> yeah, work, hostile like, workplace environment. Yeah. Shotgun dropkick there, taking out Marnie. Now Ursula, oh, Ursula seeing the spear from Wonder Woman. And now you notice that kendo stick sticking out the ground. I'm so glad that that wasn't in anybody's head. Oh, scoop slam, a back breaker, holding on for a second one. Shattering the spine of Ursula. And now Marnie. Marnie delivering a series of high kicks to the head of the champ. Ursula, meanwhile, just, just, just disassembling the stairs. Maybe she'll need them later. Shoulder tackle. A glancing blow on Marnie. And there's the spine buster. Cover attempted, but right in front of the champ. Ain't gonna happen. Oh, strike avoided by Ursula. And now, oh, grabbing the champ by the hair. But Marnie running into play and just big back kick. Wonder Woman on spaghetti legs. Ursula covered by Marnie. Again, not an aggressive cover. You can't win a match with a cover like that. Hammer tossed over the edge. Oh. I can't help but feel like she's trying to... But when she does that, I think she's trying to portray maybe that she's slightly better than she is. You know yeah. what I mean? Like she's, a certain she's, confidence. She's got an attitude, but she hasn't earned that attitude. Yeah. It's like with that, with the, with the leg drop and she just sits for a moment. She, it's an attitude yeah. without earning it. And that's stealing the pin, the, stealing Wonder Woman's pin. Good Lord. Marnie with no scruples getting the belt no matter what. 
And now she's in control within the ring. Big hook kick. But Wonder Woman coming in before she has a chance to instigate the pin. Thrown back out by Marnie. Is Marnie going to get the cover? No. Instead, going for that top rope. And big monsoon splash. But Wonder Woman again trying to interrupt before she has a chance to get the cover. She can't hammer toss her out, but instead, beautiful arm drag. Wonder Woman rolls out, taking the kendo stick with her. And Marnie now going for those stairs. Maybe Marnie heard, heard her say that she wasn't really the one to watch in this match, because she is... She's going all fucking out, isn't she? She is. But no, those stairs are in a precarious position now with the face buster. Marnie very wisely pushing those chair, pushing those steps away as she fell. Otherwise, her face would have been utterly flattened by those steps. And Ursula coming in. The return to Atlantis from Ursula, but Marnie right there to break up the cover. Again, this is falls count anywhere. So pins and submissions can be done anywhere in the ring, not just within the ropes. Marnie now returns. Wait, is the ring not in the ropes? So anywhere in the arena, not just not just yeah. within the ropes. I was gonna say. Now Ursula in control. Marnie joining in to double team the champ, flattening the champ there. That double uh, sort of double flapjack maneuver. Well, Ursula, that was a a an alliance <laughs> short-lived yeah. alliance. And alliance lasted about the time that it took me to say the name of the move. They remembered they hate each other. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Ursula going for the going for the off the beloved steel chair, but right into the question mark kick from uh, from Marnie. Ooh, but Ursula with a shotgun drop kick breaking up the two raven-haired fighters. Oh, the staircase of making Marnie uh, uh, staircase putting distance between Marnie and the uh, steel barricade there. And managed to avoid the uh, fallout, the fallaway slam of Wonder Woman, but right into the DDT from Ursula. And now the two challengers squaring up. Ursula sending Marnie back down to Atlantis. Deep, deep hooks. Could this be it? Not quite, but it was so close. The champ was nowhere to break that up. Cyclone kick avoided by way of the champion's inter intervention. And now, oh, Marnie colliding with the steel barricade. See, this this is proper hardcore action here. Wrestling is silly. Oh, kendo stick cracked over the head of the champ. And a second one, but no. Wonder Woman and half a step too quick. Giving her a receipt and a second one. And a third just merciless with that kendo stick. Took four swings for Ursula to get the timing. <sighs> when that could have been brutal if that fifth had connected. Oh. And now the pump handle slam from Wonder Woman gets the cover. And there it is. Here is your winner, and still, wrestling is silly, hardcore champion, Wonder Woman. You called it, and you were right. I did, yeah. I even called that Marnie was the weak link. You did indeed. Reigning victorious, the hardcore champion, Wonder Woman, bringing wrestling is silly to a close for this evening thank you everyone that has come to watch this evening thank you to to, to the new people that have stopped by to the people that have been lurking for a while and just now not just now joining the chat i love me a lurker but i am a sucker for attention so i do appreciate some chats if you are new here uh, come and join. Yeah, for the love of God, they love attention. <laughs> I can't be the only one to give them attention. It's too much. 
<laughs> yes, give give Zach some give Zach some some time off. Give, give me a me break. Attention. <laughs> if you do if you do enjoy the show, there are ways to support the show. The easiest way: follow the show and tell one friend. Tell one friend about this cool show that you watched on Wednesday night on Twitch. Um, another free way to support the show is to subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtubecom slash wrestling is silly, uh, where we upload all of the uh, all of the um, streams. They go live over on the. They go live over on the YouTube channel the next day if I remember to export them. Um, and yeah, if you have a little bit of spare cash, you got two ways to support. One, subs. You get you you get your emotes. We all love the emotes. But Jeff Bezos takes half my money, and he has enough money. If you want to support me in a way that makes me get more of the money. Kofi.com slash wrestling silly is your way to go. You can support us on a one-off or a monthly basis there. We got tiers ranging from two to twenty dollars a month. Huge, huge, huge shout out to our current uh our current twenty dollar uh, sorry, twenty pound a month donator, Ayakara. Uh, thank you for everything you do for the channel. Thank you for hosting the VR chat watch parties. Thank you for being a supporter of the channel. Thank you for being a contributor to the channel. But at the smaller tiers that just that just shows that you watch too many other streamers. <laughs> who do take their donations in dollars yes every yeah the default is dollars <laughs> um at at the 20 at the 20 pound a month tier you can appear on wrestling is silly uh, either um with your favorite wrestler in a tag team or do a run in to help your favorite wrestler at the 15 pound a month guest booker tier you get to book a title match uh, and then we've got smaller tiers for um shout outs names and credits uh, uh discounts in the merch shop which is also at the Kofi store we've got uh hardest caution hardest part of the ring t-shirts we've got deathmatch wrestling in a rainbow with the funky little cloud shirts we've got big meaty men slapping meat shirts we've also got deity dog shirts unthinkable hot shirts springfield sports center shirts fight boyfriend shirts if you want to buy a shirt that makes people go who the fuck is doug ziggler we've got you fucking covered mm. it's happened ask valerie um or if you want a shirt that says <laughs> i watch wrestling and i'm also terminally online we've got a blackpool catboy club shirt and who doesn't like the blackpool catboy club um so that is i just i feel like the doug ziggler one has such like it's proper bootleg vibes <laughs> it really is because the deity dogs is is a pun on actual Dolph Ziggler's old, old yeah, team the dirty so it, dogs it's like when your grandparents like bought your like Spyco the purple dog <laughs> for the fucking Game Boy yeah or, or Snoink the Hodgehog <laughs> yeah and you were like oh thanks and then like, I mean because you were a kid you were like that that's obviously the that's the real one yeah that, this is better than the original, actually. So, so <laughs> because I'm playing it. <laughs> buy your bargain, your bargain bin wrestling merch from kofi.com slash wrestling silly slash shop, um, or help us out in the memberships. If we, if we ever do hit 100 pounds a month on the memberships, we will start wrestling a silly punchline. It is a brand new show on the YouTube channel. It will, it will happen every single Saturday. More matches, more feuds, more chats with the people that make wrestling a silly possible. More tangents from me and Zach. We're currently a quarter of the way there. If you want to help us get closer to wrestling a silly punchline go for dot com slash wrestling a silly is your way to go if you want to join an us hour an, an hour, hour show and you're expecting more tangents yes an hour is the tangents <laughs> what what matches would even occur there? they happen during the tangents it's fine don't worry about it <laughs> oh so i would just have free reign to yes. just tangent yes. the whole time that is that would be chaotic mm -hmm. everyone should donate for that just just so I can just let loose, yeah. just tangent all the time, oops all tangents. It'll be great. And there'll be some wrestling going on in the front. Um, if you want to join the community, you can see all of our, all of the clips that were taken this stream, all of the quotes that were chronolo chronologized this stream. And if you're a fan of pub quizzes, we're doing a pub quiz in the Discord on Sunday. Information there, exclamation mark Discord. Get yourself in there if you're not in there already. It's a great time. We've got a we've got a lovely fucking community. If you're in the Discord, I love you. If you're not in the Discord, I love you, I love you slightly less. Um, mm. Let's do a raid, shall we? Let's do a raid. Um, my friend Tropic Arcade is playing Animal Crossing New Horizons, and I think that will make for a fun little raid, shall we? Shall we? Yeah. So we're going to send... I mean, I don't have any say in this. You're the one with all the buttons. But... So we're going to send oh, y'all over there now. Opinion. 
We're going to send y'all over there now. There is the link to the Discord server. And also, buy our gay little pins over at nerdyqueer.com. We've got we've got new exciting pins coming soon. You don't want to miss that. Nerdyqueer.com. Um, but yeah, keep your eyes peeled. Keep your new eyes pins peeled. Coming. But yeah, until then, book an ear, book a file, wherever the book you are. Hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll catch you in the next stream. I love you, bye. Bye! <laughs>